Lovely Leo, are you ready? It's been a wake up call for every star sign this month, so you are probably going to be no different. This is for you, it's your November reading for November 2023. If you are Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, fetch yourself a drink and join me. Uh, your readings have been pretty fierce actually for the last six months or so, and I'm using that word in a kind of a lion heart sort of a way and just kind of getting ready to do your reading the word lion heart has been in my psyche which it isn't normally so let me know in the comments section if that's a word that you know or that applies to you okay wow a whole bunch of birds just literally dived off the roof when i said that there is i feel like leos have had a difficult year and i feel like you've been plowing and it's not really, I mean, obviously Leos can work hard like everybody else, but there's something glamorous about being a Leo. And I don't necessarily mean bright red lipstick and high heels or whatever it is, you know, but there's something glamorous just about your vibe, your charisma, your personality, who you are. And, you know, let the earth signs push the plow. It's not really what the fire signs should be doing. But of course, in everyone's lifetime, there is a season where you've got to get, you know, put your shoulder to the wheel and all that. You're now coming into a point where I feel like in the next two or three months, you need to claim your space and it's been coming for a while. So for some of you, this is in your relationships where you've not been very dominant recently and you've been more kind of living and let live and keeping the peace and at work as well you may be reaching a point where it's too painful to stay the same and this is often when we find inspired action first card i get for you as an overall energy card is just that we've got our lovely friend the knight of wands which is exactly what i'm talking about you're going to be feeling in November, which is like the weirdest month to feel it in, because, you know, here in the UK, November is winding down, it's raining most of the time, you don't get any of that Leo sunshine recharge that you need. But hey, you know, the universe wants what it wants. It wants you to be stepping up in November and being your absolute fiery self, and also, in the same way, I like football, okay? And if you get a good striker, hear me out, if you get a good striker in a team, they need to be selfish because they need to have nothing on their mind except putting that ball in the back of the net. They don't think about it twice, they don't ask anyone's permission, boom, it goes in the back of the net. And I feel like you need to return Look, I know, I, I'm trying to say this without being offensive, but Leo needs to act with ego. It's just because you're the fixed fire sign and you pull it off so well and also it really fits your vibe because you're doing that for the rest of the zodiac. You know, the rest of us, I'm a Pisces, I can, you know, I'm never going to put myself forward like that. I'm always second guessing everything. But I like to see my Leo friends out there kind of loud proud full of fire and not thinking about other people for because you've been doing that for a few months and it's not your role all the time okay you're a leader you're leading the pack so whatever's happening in your life whether it's relationship or whether it's um, about your career your goals your destiny it's giving me an itchy ear which is always a sign you need to have this attitude and it's going to come to you in November Okay, so just enjoy it. It's all about you. What else are we bringing into November? <laughs> yes. Two of Wands. Look at this. Look at the fire that's going on here. Literally fighting, butting heads. There is a power struggle that you've had for a really long time. And it may be that it's that in a relationship and who holds the power and whatever. It's time to show up. It's not time to think about it and it's not time to be fair. 
and it's not time to put someone else first or please people, you know, unless it's your kids. Okay, I get that. With kids, you often have to put them first, but I'm talking about the rest of the rest of them. Okay, so we've got fire with the knight of wands. We've got the two of wands where it's like, rah, things are coming to a head. I think because we're just coming out of the full moon eclipse on the 28th of October, or maybe just about to go into it, depending on when these videos go up, everybody's like skittles at the bowling alley. Everything that is standing in your way that you may have been using as an excuse or a crutch or a smoke screen or whatever is swept aside and you're left only with the truth. And then the universe says, okay, here's your truth. What do you want to do about it? And it's particularly saying that to you. Um, where's your lion heart? Where are you brave? Love it. Let's have a look at the first week. Oh God. <laughs> okay, I've got a glass table by the way. It's not mine um, and it vibrates every time I do that. So I'll try and do it a li little less sharply. This card doesn't want to come out. Hmm, not surprised. Right, okay, first week of November as we're coming out of the full moon eclipse and it's gonna be an interesting week because it's like somebody upset the apple cart, you know, like a massive storm. And then, you know, you go out and you're picking through the flotsam and the jetsam. You get the hermit, I know. So, okay, if you're gonna have a week in November where you take stock and you regroup, it's the first week. First week of November, you're in hermit mode. Absolutely unnatural for you, more your predecessor Virgo, okay? Is it the predecessor? Leo Virgo, no, your successor, but the one next to you in the zodiac. Honestly, I'm having that kind of week at the moment. So you are dealing maybe with a Virgo as well or with Virgo subjects such as service and work, worthiness and serving other people in your life or considering why you're serving other people in your life. And I would say also with the Hermit, it's a very isolated card, but sometimes you've got to in disentangle yourself from a situation before you can probably commune with spirit, Leo. Leos can commune with spirit. You are brave in that you will do that spiritual, what other people would be terrified of, work, okay? I have a friend who's a Leo and it's like, I know when she's gonna do this sort of thing because it's like burning the house down, that's what she calls it. I'm gonna burn the house down. Now, obviously I don't mean at all that you should physically burn the house down, but metaphorically, I see this glint in her rather wild eye and she goes, I need to burn the house down. And you think, okay, she's gonna make a move. It's a Leo move. You are taking stock, separating yourself from others for this week and contemplating quite a big move that you're gonna make. In a relationship, it can be just upsetting that apple cart. You know, um, speaking your mind, speaking your heart, absolutely coming out with the absolute bald naked truth, okay? Not keeping the peace. Then it comes up with the Five of Swords, Venus in Aquarius. Now, Aquarius is your opposite sign. And very often we flip into our opposite sign when we need to. And it feels to me, Venus, this is Venus in Aquarius, the Five of Swords. And you always find here that they're on a battlefield, but they're not openly fighting. You get somebody who's gone after the battle has finished and they're picking up the swords. There is a certain passiveness, there's a certain strategy here. Now, normally I would say you get this card when you're dealing with someone who's a bit emotionally unavailable. So for some of you, you may have been keeping quiet because you didn't want to spook somebody who's been acting like they're emotionally unavailable, okay? 
I don't know what card we're going to pull next, but if that is you, I think that that particular consideration that you're giving that person is going to come to an end and run out in November. And you may, especially if you've been suppressing something for the whole month or for the whole six months, it could be that the pendulum would just wildly swing to where you cannot keep your gob shut. And I'm not sure if you should. You're like, and another thing, and it's all just, you're burning the house down, that's it. I'm gonna raise this to the ground. Now, just for a few of you, if you're dealing with somebody at work, particularly in the first week of November, post eclipse, you might need to temper your temper, okay? Because you could be dealing with an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. You could definitely be dealing with an issue about communication. If this is somebody at work, you can't afford to gob off in the way that you can gob off in a good relationship at home. Do you know what I mean? If you let off steam at work and there's no holds barred and you say, I'm going to raise this place to the ground, pretty much you'll be picking up your P45. Now, if that's what you want, go ahead. Knock yourself out. Don't really burn the house down, though. Can't say that enough. Um, but for if you want to keep that job and you want to win and, I don't know, get their job, become promoted, whatever it is, stay on the down low as well. Okay, so be your Leonine self, but there's a certain sneakiness when you get that Five of Swords. There's an emotional unavailability, and it might be that you need to get into that mode yourself of being emotionally unavailable and keeping below the radar, but knowing that you are affecting a campaign of change. Please leave me a comment for that, because I know that resonates really well with some of you, okay? If the whole reading resonates, there will be an extended reading. I forgot to say that. Um, that will be at the end. I take all the cards from this reading and I do another love reading, an extended reading. Sometimes I do a whole new love reading. Sometimes I clarify all the cards that are here and I channel messages and it all gets a bit freaky and fun. So that will be the first link in the description box if this is really resonating with you now. Okay. So, Fiery Leo, let's have a look at the second week of November. I'm going to look at each week and then I'm going to look at your love life, okay? Gosh, there's some people walking their dogs outside. I'm quite near the sea, I can see it. They've got the most enormous raincoats. I need one of those raincoats. They've got a Shih Tzu with a little coat on. Oh, and like a poodle with a coat on as well. It's 40 mile an hour winds here and the sea is threatening to flood the whole place. And they're taking the dog down there. I know. Should have been wearing a wetsuit. Anyway, enough of me gawping at people out of the window. Second week of November. Yes. That's what we've been waiting for, Leo. Ace of Swords. Something that comes in that isn't confused, that isn't woolly, that isn't open to interpretation. Blah, blah, blah. Yes. You know, this is, you've, your thinking has been really caught between two um, places, between service, guilt and obligation, and the truth and authenticity. And what happens is the Ace of Swords comes in like a flash, like an epiphany, like a crown swing up your crown chakra, and you're like, boy, oy, 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 oing, ting, I know what to do. You can't avoid the truth in the second week of November. And nor should you. So you've been in hermit mode. You've done your five of swords. You may be on the down low. You may be keeping your powder dry, but you have powder, you know. And you've got more powder than Guy Fawkes. Do you know what I'm saying? And then ping, in comes the truth. Here it is. You either hear it from someone else or you hear it yourself from your own noggin, okay? Yes, Queen of Swords to go with it. And this is where you slip into your opposite sign of Aquarius and you take all the emotion out of it, all the emotion and the fire and the feelings that you've had and the anger 
that you've been feeling, whether it's about a relationship, work, career, whatever it is, and you channel it into being the Queen of Swords. It's like, I felt it, I know what I want, and now I'm putting all that to one side and I'm acting through logic with my head. Also, the Queen of Swords has excellent boundaries. Nobody will cross her. She just won't have any nonsense. And this is you, this is how it comes out in week two. You may cut certain people from your life during this week or certain actions that you don't favour, that don't feel right. And you may not even be able to explain it to people. That's your prerogative. Right, week three. Very interesting. This is like pure power this month. It's like pure power to you, you know? It's about you, you're front and center. Now, even if you don't feel like that, you can't avoid it, so don't. God, okay. Week three, Leo, week three. The dog caught up with something. Nine of pentacles, Venus in Virgo. This always depicts a woman who's made her own money, is standing in her own garden, she's got like an exotic bird, she's got some nice clothes on, she's set up, her hair's had a really good wash day. You can see the shine on it, I mean look at that. She's feeling it, she's feeling <sighs> number one. And she's not really interested in what's going on with everyone else. And <sighs> it makes you immensely attractive actually love that but also it's an earth card so it's tethered and it's meaningful and it's real for some of you there's an issue at work about how much money you're being paid or how much work you're doing or the two things you're not prepared to do the work of people who are off sick or do the work of everybody else it's unreasonable but then we move into the two of swords the universe hits the pause button in week three and just says, consider carefully these things. And let's have a look what they are in week four. When you get that two of swords, it can feel frustrating, but just remember this. Remember this reading at that point. And Gemma was saying that just as I was ready to absolutely take up the next step and power forward, the universe goes, hold on a minute, okay? Hell yes, God, I'm loving this. Okay, then we get the magician. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous energy, putting you front and center. And also for me, this is somebody coming in, masculine energy coming in, and I don't wanna use the word helping you because you don't need help. It's just bringing some magic your way. That is why you had the Two of Swords. There's something that needs to be tinkered with by the universe. You will get in week three of November, a false need to follow a certain lead, okay? And the universe is gonna hold you back and you're like, oh my God, I deserve this. And the universe says, hold on a minute, Nelly. I'm giving you the magician in the end of November in week four that will give you something 10 times more powerful, okay? And you get it with the Two of Pentacles, which is switching up a certain idea in the 3D. So in other words, you've envisaged your next move, whether it's with a relationship that's romantic or whether it's at work or whatever. And you just need to make a few real world tweaks and the universe will say, okay, do it this way. So don't be tempted in week three and four to rush forward until you get that magician, which could come in the form of a person, a book, a YouTube video, even just an Instagram post or something. You see something and you're like, ah, oh, yes. That's what's been missing. That is the missing piece. Massive, massive bridge of transformation for you in November, Leo. Hit the like button if you're up for it. I know you are. 
only the like button did a little flame, do you know what I mean? Okay, love life, let's have a quick look at your love life. Oh yes. Oh my God. Right. Your love life, you get the star, which is Aquarius. Now what this is about is deep change. Something's going on in your love life that you may or may not want to happen, but it's happening. And you can be a big part of which direction it goes in because you've got the magician already. You've also got the high priestess that I've just pulled and haven't told you yet, but now I just did. But you also have the star. Divine feminine energy. Not out there huffing and puffing and breathing fire. Don't need any of that. Simply manifesting. You'll be surprised what you want in your love life. You'll be surprised by the certainty you feel. And it may be very different to what you felt at the beginning of the month, okay? But go with it. You can have what you want, but you may not want what you think you want. Oof. With the high priestess, divine internal feminine energy. From the middle, no, it's not even the middle. From in the last week of November, your love life takes a shift. <laughs> I've just pulled another card, I'll tell you in a minute. Your love life takes a shift into feminine energy and into magic and into your own ability to manifest. Then I get the page of pentacles. The universe is saying to you, it's not gonna happen quickly. Your love life isn't gonna happen quickly and nor should it, but it doesn't matter. This is like your manifestation is like one of those old school 80s coffee machines where it just dripped the water through, drip, drip, drip. And if you left it, you ended up with a really hot, nice jug of coffee, okay? Oof. Leo, eight of cups. Some of you make your move and you don't know yet if that's gonna be you. Some of you may decide to distance yourself from something or somebody to leave. Some of you may come up with an ultimatum, but you need to make sure you're living that ultimatum. Sometimes with an ultimatum, it's in our head and it's a threat. This is not that kind of thing. This is the ultimatum where it's obvious that it's coming out of every pore of your being and that you are already tossing the match as you walk away. I am super excited about this. I'm gonna do a love card. In your extended reading, I'm going in. I'm going in on the magician and the high priestess and the star on how to manifest and about your magic and about the U-turn and about relationship. Can this relationship with this person still work or do I need to walk away? That is your extended reading, okay? I'm looking forward to that. So I'm gonna use a different deck and pull some cards for your person as well as you. Okay, I've got to put my fingers over the nutty bits because it's YouTube. You get the gardener as your love card. When you get the gardener, it's very much planting, weeding, hoeing, and making sure that there's a season. So there's a season for work in the garden. It's usually the winter and um, yeah, autumn, winter time. You do loads of preparation and boring stuff. I know, I'm not massively keen on garden, gardening. You might be like, actually, Gemma, I find that very interesting, fill your boots. So it's about doing the real work. And also the question you're gonna be asking yourself when you come to this U-turn in relationships or about turn in relationships is whether somebody is working on the garden with you or whether you're doing it alone. I know. 
Okay, I'm gonna go and do the extended reading. If you wanna join me there, I'll see you in a minute. And if not, leave me a comment about your situation. Drop your astrology in the comments, say hello. I read all my comments and I do try and reply to as many as I can. It's just me doing it, so it will be me if I reply, okay? See you on the other side. I'm making a cup of tea. Namaste.